Hi, my name is James Catherall, a co-founder of Catherall Audio, and today we're going to be talking about how to share your main stage concerts with your clients or with separate computers and how to update your main stage concerts anytime you want to add new patches and new sounds without losing all your previous balancing work that you've done. So first, let's talk about the things we need to prepare in our main stage concert so it's ready to be sent to the client or to our other computer. Here in my main stage concert, the first thing I want to do is go up to file and then go down to here where it says concert and I'm going to click on cleanup and we're going to see this pop up window. So what cleanup is going to do is delete any samples or sampler instruments or other plugins that it sees inside of the concert but actually aren't being used in any of the patches. That way you can delete all that stuff you're not using and make your concert a little bit smaller and easier to send off to somebody else. So here it's telling me that it's gonna delete stuff and it's making sure I actually wanna do that. And I'm gonna say yes and click delete. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to file, concert, and then I'm gonna click on consolidate. And then in here, I'm gonna have all of these boxes checked and then I'm gonna click okay. The consolidate function is going to make sure that all of the different plugins and patches you're using are actually contained within the .concert file itself. Because sometimes you might be using some plugins and some stock main stage sounds that won't actually get put into the concert. So if you send it to somebody else, it might say that that thing is missing because it wasn't actually contained inside of it. So I always consolidate every time just to make sure everything is contained in that concert file before I send it to somebody else. Now that we've done that, this concert is ready to be sent off to our client or to that other computer. So I'm gonna push Command Q to close this main stage concert. And then now here on the desktop is that dot .concert file that I wanna send off. So now that you're sending this concert off, let's talk about what things are gonna be contained in that main stage concert and what things won't. So anything that's a stock main stage plugin is gonna be saved entirely inside of that concert. So even if you've created new user sampler instruments or any plugin settings or any new presets on any of those main stock main stage plugins, that will be contained in the dot .concert file that you can send off. It will save third party plugin settings, but it won't save the plugin itself. So if you're using Omnisphere and you wanna send that to somebody else, that other computer will also need Omnisphere. And if it does, it'll save that preset for them to use on that computer. So whatever you do on your computer with Omnisphere, you can send it to them and they'll be able to use it right away as soon as they download that new concert. But it won't actually save Omnisphere itself. So if they don't have Omnisphere, they won't be able to use it. Anytime I'm sending a main stage concert to somebody, I think that Dropbox is the best application to use. And when you're sending it or receiving it, I think you should also have the desktop client version of Dropbox, because I think it just makes it way easier. I can just actually drop this doc concert file into Dropbox itself and send that off to somebody else. Or what I usually like to do is right click on the concert and then go down here to where it says compress. And I'm gonna click on that. So compressing a concert is gonna put it down into a zip file and that makes it just a little bit smaller but it also makes it easier to upload to Dropbox and then also download off of Dropbox as well. I think it also helps keep the concert a little bit more contained so it doesn't get messed with when you upload it to Dropbox or when you download it back onto the other computer. And now once it's done, you'll see right here, this is our .zip file of this concert that we had created. So now we can upload that to Dropbox and it'll usually upload quicker and download a bit quicker. I'll typically use a .zip file and I'll upload the .concert file as well, just so we have both of those there and they're both ready to access, just because sometimes people run into issues with either one, that a zip file might have a problem or the .concert file might have a problem. So usually it's best to put both of those into Dropbox for that person to choose which one will work best for them. Now, if you have the desktop version of Dropbox downloaded, you can see it right here in the finder and then here's that folder and here's where I uploaded that concert. So you can actually double click that and open it straight from Dropbox. But what you should actually do is download that onto your desktop so it's saved locally to your computer. That way you can still use it even if you're not connected to the internet. So that's the best way to share a concert and send that off to a client or get it ready to be sent to a different computer that you're using. Now let's talk about another scenario. So let's say you're working with a sound designer or a composer that's building a main stage concert for you, but they haven't finished the whole composition, or if you're in marching band or drum corps or anything of that nature, and they're sending it to you movement by movement. 
So now you have movement one, you've been using it, you've been rehearsing with it, and you have that concert all dialed in and you love everything about movement one. You've maybe tweaked some reverbs a little bit, you've maybe added some reverb or some effect, or you've balanced all of the samples and all the different faders in your main stage concert, and you don't wanna lose any of that now that you've received an updated concert. Let's talk about how you can do that. So I'm gonna start up here with this new concert. This is the one that I've just received from my composer, and it has some updated patches that I need to add into my old concert. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this new concert and I'm going to go to show package contents. And when you'll do that, what you'll actually notice is a dot concert file is actually just a folder that contains a bunch of different things that main stage needs to be able to put that concert together. The main thing we're going to look at are the sampler instruments and the samples. I'm going to open both of these and I'm also going to go to my old concert. I'm going to right click that and then I'm gonna click show package contents. And I'm gonna do the same thing, it's open both of these folders. And what I wanna do is copy these sampler instruments and these samples from this new concert into my old one. So I can see I already have the classical piano and the full strings. So I just need to take these other three sampler instruments and I'm gonna hold option and drag it over here and then drop it in. And then same thing, samples. I have classical piano and full strings but I need all of these other ones. I'm gonna hold option and I'm gonna drag these over to samples and then drop. So you need to do that just so you have all the samples and sampler instruments from that new concert, especially if that person created some of their own sampler instruments or they cut and recorded their own samples that you're gonna be using. You're gonna to need to do that so it's ready to be used in your old concert. Next, we need to work on getting the actual patches themselves from the new concert into our old concert that we've been using. So let's open up that new main stage concert. In this new concert, I need to take patch three and this sampler patch, and I need to bring those to my old concert. So the first thing I'm gonna do is highlight patch three, and I'm gonna go up to this gear, and down at the bottom, I can do save as patch, or I can push command E. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna push Command E, and now this new window will pop up that says Export Patches at the top. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder, and that's gonna contain all of the patches for this specific main stage concert. That way they all stay in one place. So down here on the bottom left, I'm gonna click New Folder, and I'm gonna call this YouTube Patches, and then I'm gonna click Create. And then under this, I'm just gonna give this patch the same name that it had in this new concert which is patch three, and then I'm gonna click export. I'm gonna do the same thing for this sampler patch. I'm gonna push command E, I'm gonna leave it as sampler. It's still in the YouTube patches folder with my other patch, and I'm gonna click export. So now those patches are exported and they're ready to be brought into my other concert. So let's close this new one and open up the old one. Now I have my old concert open and I only have patch one and two. I need to add patch three and that sampler patch. So if I go back up to the gear, down at the bottom it says load patch slash set, or I can push Command I, and this is gonna allow me to import patches and sets. I'm gonna start with patch three, hit import, and then I'm also gonna do it again and click sampler and then import. And there we go. See, it remembered the sampler. There it is, sampler one that I was using. And patch three is right here. It saved all of those splits. It saved all the layers. Everything's ready to be used. It even saved this Omnisphere patch that I have right here. I can see this is even put to the same preset that I was using in the previous concert. And that's the best way to share and send concerts and to update your concerts inside of MainStage. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have a MainStage topic you'd like to see us cover in a future video, make sure you leave a comment down below. And we'll see you in the next one.